everyone, it's Brandy Collinborn, and I'm a furniture painter out of Sacramento, California. I'm with Brushed by Brandy, um, and I'm a, a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador, and I'm here tonight to work with you guys on a sea sponge painting technique. So um, come on, you guys, and tell me where you're watching from. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Had a little technical difficulty. Um, <laughs> it was not my fault. <laughs> yeah, it was my husband's <laughs> fault this time. So I'm here, I have my son Noah with me. He's gonna be my assistant tonight. My husband is here to answer questions, my husband Sean. Um, so come on if you guys have any questions at all um, and he'll repeat those to me. And then we're gonna be doing a Dixieville giveaway tonight, you guys. We're gonna give away an eight ounce paint, an eight ounce size of Dixieville paint of your choice of color. And to be entered in that, all you have to do is go like my page at Breast Fry Brandy, share this post, and then come on and tell me what color you would choose. Of Dixie Bell paint. So Lana says hi. Hi guys. Thank Linda you. says hi. Thank you for coming on. I feel like it's been forever since I've been live on the Dixie Bell page so I'm so happy to be back with you guys. Um, I've actually kind of missed it. It was only last week I did one but it's been a while so um, so I'm hoping to make this a more regular thing now and we're getting settled into our new house. And um, the piece I'm going to be working on tonight is this jewelry chest here. And this is a customer's piece and she brought it to me it was in really good condition but it was that old glossy wood finish so it was just outdated um, and so what i've done to prepare this piece for our live tonight is i have a coat of dixie bell slick stick on here because it was such a glossy finish um, slick stick is a gripping primer so slick stick is made for painting on surfaces like glass and pvc and laminate it just gives the paint something to bite onto so this has a coat of dixie bell slick stick under here and then I've got two coats of Dixie Belle Savannah Mist, which is a pale blue. Um, and I just laid on the Savannah Mist with my Dixie Belle Mini Brush. This is my favorite of the Dixie Belle brushes, you guys. It's my go-to. Um, these are fairly new, but I have fallen in love with these brushes. They are my new favorite. They're a combination of nylon and polyester bristles. And what difference I've noticed that makes, they clean fabulously. They are super easy to clean out. So um, these have been used quite a few times and I don't have the paint remnants that I have on a lot of my used brushes because they clean so well. I think I'm gonna get a lot of life out of these. So let's talk sea sponges. I think we're all a little traumatized from the 80s when everything was sponge painted. Um, you know, all us children of the 80s when every house in our, or every wall in our house looked like the background of a JCPenney photo studio you know, with the sponge painted walls. This is not what we're doing, you guys, but I'm gonna use this tool, this way underrated tool, to lay on some paint and add some depth with different colors. Um, so this is a craft store item and they come in a whole bunch of different sizes and shapes. Um, you know, this is a natural sea sponge, has a little bit more texture. I think this is an artificial sea sponge, but I like this one the best because it's really easy for my hand to hold. And then I like this flat surface on it. So this is my favorite one to use. You can see it's well used. Shannon um, says hi from St. Charles, Missouri. There's a lot of highs on hi, here. I'm sorry, everyone. ladies. Come on and say hi, please. Let me know where you're watching from. Go like my page at Brushed by Brandy. And then come back and tell me what color you would choose. And we're giving away a Dixie Belle paint tonight. Um, I also have out my Dixie Belle sea sponge roller. So this is available on the Dixie Belle website. Um, along with their paint and I'm going to try this so I'm going to try laying it on with a handheld sponge and with the roller and we can kind of compare the two together so to get started what I'm going to do I've got out a whole bunch of colors and all my colors are a gradation of the same tones so these are all the Dixie Belle pale blues that I've got out tonight um, I have out Dixie Belle blue which is going to be kind of my darkest color the gold I have out vintage duck egg um, sea glass and Savannah Mist, which is my base color. Um, and I'm gonna use my base color as I sponge it in because that's gonna make it look like my base color is peeking through in some places. It's gonna mix with some of my other colors. I also brought out um, Stormy Seas. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this, but this is a great darker tone that could be for shading. We're all over the place, so Texas, Florida. Hi guys, I'm in California. It's early here, but it's getting late for you guys. Um, do you guys have any plans for Thanksgiving? What I'm gonna do is I have out a paper plate here and I'm gonna take some of my colors and I'm gonna pour a little dollop of them onto my paper plate. So that was Vintage Duck Egg. This is the Gulf. 
And I'm gonna kind of spread them around my um, paper plate like a palette, like you would on a palette. And then when I sponge these on, it's gonna layer the colors. It adds depth to the paint. Um, you know, it's not gonna look cheesy or, um, and I can also shade with it. So um, uh, it's, it's a way to blend colors with a really, really easy, simple tool. Um, this is some sea glass. And my last color I'm gonna put on my plate. You can... Now, did you already pre-stir your paint? Uh, yeah, I, I just shake these. These are just shaken. Um, I go through these little eight ounce containers fairly quickly, so um, you know they stay pretty well mixed. And then this is Savannah Mist, which is my base color. Okay. So Cheryl I'll... says hi from Marlton, New Jersey. Hi guys. David over in Largo, Florida. Ooh, it's getting late. Are you guys like uh, after dinner watching me paint? So this is kind of what my plate looks like after I've dumped all my paint on. And then I'm going to take my sea sponge. And um, I'm going to turn this to the side, and we're going to work on the side here, which is a nice um, flat surface for me to show, kind of show you guys. So um, I'm going to dip my sea sponge. Each section I'm going to dedicate to a different color. That way I can kind of control how the colors go on from one sponge. Okay, so if you'll notice here, I kind of went around my sponge and just dabbed each one of my colors into a different section. I'm gonna to try to keep them consistent as I'm laying on this paint, but they, they're, they're meant to get mixed up and stuff. I kind of want my outer edges to be a little bit darker and it's gonna lighten as I go into the center. And then I'm gonna be putting on some um, Redesign with Prima gold foil transfers on here. My apologies, but the, the comments are flowing so quick, but somebody made the comment that they did this to their walls many years ago, they're horrid. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you guys, I know. We bought a house not that long ago. I guess it's been, what, two or three years now, the Deer Valley house? Um, and it had sponge painting on the walls, and I'll tell you, it was the first thing I took off. Um, so I feel, I, I felt crazy when I was like, oh, this is a tool, I'm gonna bring it out and try it again. You guys, it's beautiful on furniture, I'm telling you this. Like, please don't think I'm crazy. You're gonna wanna try this. Um, I forgot to tell you, my sea sponge is a little bit damp, so I dampened it before I started. So, and dampened it, squeezed out as much water as I could. So now I'm just laying on my colors. Um, you might want to come in closer. I don't know, can you see the different layers of color on here? I'm adding a little bit more of different colors as I go. Um, I'm gonna just keep going over the same spots. I think, you know, the less you sponge it, the more spongy your, your surface looks and so you want to keep going over the same spots over and over and over again with different colors and that's how you're going to get that layered effect so if you just come around and go <laughs> you know that's when you get the really spongy look and i don't want that so i'm going to keep layering these colors on top of each other and there it's going to add depth into my paint to where it looks like it's got layers of paint in there um, you know, I can come back with my base color, which is that Savannah Mist, and lay that over, and it looks like my base color is kind of peeking through. You can kind of hear my door, or my door <laughs> hitting there. Sorry about that. So I'm just going back and getting different colors, refilling them from my plate, and I'm going to keep these, keep going until I have this side, and then I can come back and I can clean up the colors. Where, where I want to shade around it, I will add a little bit of darker color in those areas when, while my paint is still wet. Chris says, love your page, love Dixie Bell's page. Watching you paint is so relaxing and educational. Oh, good, thank you guys. Um, you guys, if you go onto my YouTube page, I try to keep all my videos, my lives that I do um, on my page and the Dixie Bell page updated on my YouTube channel. You can search Fresh by Brandy. Um, I just posted a few new videos there. Um, Laura says she'll be rag rolling again. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, this, is, this is my four-year-old Logan, you guys, and watch out because he's the ham, so you can fully expect hello. a show now. Hi. None of my kids are performers. They're all pretty shy about being on camera, so when they do come on, I try to encourage it for them to come out and join me. It's a family affair. Jessie so, said she just got her first Dixie Bell paints today. Did you? What colors did you get? 
I'm always excited to know what colors people choose for their first order. My very first Dixie Belle paint, I won't ever forget, ever, 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 was Palmetto. My first order was Dixie Belle Palmetto, which is still one of my favorite colors. It's a really rich green. Cindy says you're the only one she's truly learned anything from. Oh, thank you. I'm always so, I, I get some of the nicest messages, and they're, it's so encouraging for me to know that these videos are helpful for you guys. Um... So I'm getting a nice, really muddy, mixed paint color look with my sea sponge. So I told you guys we're going to try the Dixie Belle sea sponge roller, and I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm feeling crazy tonight. Um, Katarina, really quick, says her first order was vintage duck egg. Oh, yeah, and I have vintage duck egg out here. That's this blue right here. It's super pretty. Slightly green undertones, um, a little bit of gray in there. It's beautiful. Um, so I'm going to roll. I think um, my plate probably isn't the best palette for the sea sponge roller, but let's try it. Let's try it. It's probably, it's much easier. And Robbie wants to know, what kind of paint is this? This is Dixie Belle paint. Dixie Belle paint is a chalk mineral paint. Um, it's great for painting on um, furniture pieces. It has uh, uh, properties that help it grip really well with minimal preparation to your furniture piece with no sanding beforehand. Um, so this is pretty comparable, you guys. It lays it on pretty well. Um, for this piece, it's a little small, but I, I really like the look. I mean, you saw how quick that was, and I finished up this top section here. So I like this as a tool for the same look. Um, I probably over wet this a little bit. Got a little drippy when I first put it on. Um, just needs to be dampened. Mama, I love the dress You love it? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, stick with me, guys. I'm getting a base on here, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to use my sea sponge for a little bit of shading. So don't think I'm crazy. We're going to get a beautiful look out of this. Laura wants to know what kind of uh, roller that is. That's a Dixie Belle sea sponge roller. So you get this piece when you order. You get the sea sponge piece here, and then I just have it on a roller handle from the hardware store. But that was really easy to use. My son is bored by my video. <laughs> um, here's a funny story, you guys. I um, bought my son a, a um, Chromebook for his birthday, my middle son, and um, I told him the only channel on YouTube he was allowed to watch was my YouTube channel. I've never seen such a disappointed look on a kid's face. It's oh, hilarious. Good. The they want to go because they know we have dinner plans after this and I told them they have to sit through my video before we go to our dinner plans. I went ahead and put some stormy seas on here and I'm going to use that to deepen the edges here. So I'm just going to dip my sponge into my stormy seas and then refill it on some of my other colors. Um, vintage duck egg, get some savannah mist in there. Now with you mixing this, does it give the illusion as if it's blending all into the same color? Yeah, it, uh, not all over. Can you guys see? Because um, it's tough to see as far as on camera, truly yeah, maybe the if variance I, in coloring. If I catch a different angle, as it starts drying too, I think on camera yeah. you'll be able to see the colors the a little sheen, bit better. Yeah. It, did that help if I turned it? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So in some spots it does, but I can see, you know, I can see the gulf peeking through here. If you, if you keep going over this, eventually, yes, it's all going to become one big muddy color. So you want to sponge over them several times, but, um, you know, still keep it to where your each color is a little bit individual. So this is Dixie Belle Stormy Seas, and it's a good blue color, and I'm just using it to kind of darken around my edges. This is just to add a little bit of character to my piece. Um, this has one of those flip top lids, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up because I'm getting paint on my lid. Don't want to do that. So this is another technique for blending your paint. Um, it, it it's not that like smooth blended look, but it gives you a, a you know a blended finish. Now, does this need any kind of wax to seal it? Um, Dixie Belle paint does have a built-in top coat, so you don't have to seal it. I generally seal my pieces for extra durability because I'm giving them to a customer, and I like my customer to know their pieces are. Um, you know, low maintenance and easy to use. I, I also don't always know what environment they're going into. Do they have kids? How's it going to be? How many fingers are going to touch it? So um, I seal my pieces for extra durability when I hand them over to a customer. Um, I seal them with Dixie Belle Clear Coat. 
I love waxes. I love the look of waxes and the texture of waxes, but I think customers appreciate um, the low maintenance of the clear coats. So I have wax pieces in my own home. They've held up really well. Uh, one of my sons has a desk in his room that's waxed. And um, honestly, it's been a couple of years and I've not re-waxed my pieces. So wax is a nice durable finish as well. Now this process, does it create texture? There is going to be minimal texture here. You can come back with a, um, a sanding sponge and sand this back if you want. I usually do a light, light brush with a sanding sponge in between. You guys, this area here was a little heavy on the, um, um, what was the darker color I used? Uh, Stormy Seas. So I'm coming back with the empty side of my sponge and I'm just blending that out to kind of take that paint off a little bit. So I can use the empty side and then come back to the side that has paint on it. And where did you get your furniture rollers? Oh my gosh, aren't they awesome? <laughs> okay, so these three wheel dollies are from Amazon. They're in my Amazon shop. If you go to Amazon and search Fresh by Brandy, um, I have an Amazon shop with all of my favorite tools in there. Um, and these are three wheel dollies. But I'll tell you, I ha I've had these for a long time and I hated them until we moved to this house and I have flooring in my house and in my workspace that doesn't have grooves on them. If your workspace has grooves in the floor, these will catch every single one and your piece will fall off. So they didn't work for me until I moved to this workspace and put the smooth flooring down. Just a tip. So consider that if you're thinking about getting some. So this is a really, really subtle blend. It's got the different shades of blue peeking through. It's starting to dry so you can really see it better. If you come down here and you see like this section has some brighter blues in it. This is a little heavier on like maybe the vintage duck egg in here. Um, I can see like the gold in my Dixie Belle blue in here. So you can see the different shades are starting to come through as it's drying. Um, Stormy seas up here in this corner, in this corner. So. It's beautiful. It's beautiful in person. I don't think it looks dated at all. How do you get to the Amazon shop? Um, if you go to Amazon and search Fresh Fry Brandy, I have uh, my Amazon shop set up. I'll also post a link on here, you guys, after this broadcast. I'll come on and I'll post a link to my Amazon shop. And I try to keep that updated with all my favorite tools and things I like to use. Um, so a set of four of my, my dollies, I think, was about $25 on Amazon for a set of four. So it's pretty reasonable. I'm going to re-wet my sponge. It's getting a little dry because I've been um, dabbing a lot with it and come over to the front. And then what kind of piece is this? This is a jewelry armoire. So let's see, I have the top open so I can't open this side. So I close this. See here? So I do want to carry this onto the sides. Um, so this is a customer's piece here she brought me and I just had a really dated finish on it. She sent me an inspiration photo that was off of, um, you know, Pinterest or something. And we're using that as our inspiration. And it just had various shades of blue. It was a very modeled look. Um, so I'm achieving that with a sponge. Now, why go from the roller to the sponge? Um, I wouldn't normally. Normally, I would stick with one. I just wanted to show you the difference of both on camera. So, yeah, normally I would just stick with one tool through the whole thing. I actually just got that sea sponge roller. It's new. I've never used it. And I wanted to try it out, too. So... This was a perfect opportunity for me to see how it looks. And I like how it laid the paint on. I think my piece was a little small for the size of the roller. So it's a little easier for me to lay it on with my hand because of the size. My piece is a smaller, smaller piece. Great questions tonight, you guys. Thank you Lynn so says much. she's working on a jewelry box, a jewelry box armoire as well. They're really fun. They're fun pieces to work on. You can get creative with them. I'm going to come here and I want to just add kind of a really light stripe down the center so it looks like a highlight. Have you ever, back to your dollies, have you ever tried to use them on carpet? Oh my gosh, I wouldn't even try. I can tell you right now it wouldn't work. Um, I honestly hated them. They're a pain in the butt. If you have anything but a perfectly smooth surface, your piece will want to fall off of it. So um, a, a more traditional type furniture dolly might be better for that. Like one of the four wheeled ones, that's a big square. Um, but I wouldn't try these wheeled ones. You're trying to get four sets of wheels to move concurrently, and if there's any, any, anything that gets in its way, one of those sets of wheels is going to want to, you know, squirrel. It's going to, it's going off. So, um, yeah, I, I 
wouldn't try it. Good question though. I learned the hard way. I had these and I hated them for a long time. I like this. I like this little bit of highlight in the center. This was Dixie Bell Sea Glass that I just used to highlight it. So I've got my stormy seas kind of out here on the edges and then the sea glass in the middle really gives a nice, some nice contrast. And you know, again, I'll, I'll let this dry and if I see spots that I feel like need, you know, a little bit of a different color, I'll come back and add it. So now I'm coming here and I'm gonna do the same thing I just did there and I'm gonna highlight, you know, a little bit down the center with some sea glass. Probably my lightest color I've got out on my palette is the sea glass. Um, at this point, they're all kind of mixed together on my sponge. It's messy for your fingers, but it all washes off. Um, Betty threw a tip in there that maybe a tarp or a drop cloth would work on carpet and just pulling it. Oh, true. Yeah. Cardboard would probably be the best. Cardboard, yeah. If you have, obviously, an abundance of cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> like we do right now. We're building a house, you guys, and my husband thinks I'm crazy because all of our cabinetry, you know, our kitchen cabinets and whatnot, came wrapped in cardboard, and I told him I wanted to save them all. So we've got like 500,000 pieces of cardboard. But I'm telling you, I've been glad I have them. Um, I use them to spray paint over, so I save cardboard like that. So if you've got the space, um, keep that stuff Or not. You never know. Please, we've got a, a workshop building that I get to use all for my storage. I'm coming back. This is my stormy seas. I'm going to open this cabinet a little bit so I can get down here. Um, this is my Dixie Bell stormy seas and I'm using this to kind of shade my edges on this side. So I've got some up here. I've got some down here and then I hit the center with that um, sea glass and those are going to be ever so slightly a different color. So this is a great way to add some shading without having to get a really like smooth blended look. It's, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. This is my side of drying here. If I back, I don't know, is it easier to see if I back up or if I come in close? Uh, as far as the coloring differences, if it's turned to its side, you can kind of oh, see from okay. the light. Betty's not helping my case. She says they save cardboard too. Oh, thanks, Betty. See, I'm not crazy. It's a genius idea. Well, Betty is a genius, you guys. Be like Betty. <laughs> yeah, be like Betty. I'm going to come over here and do this. Um, this is another flat surface, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, you guys can see this repeated. I'm kind of running out of paint on my plate, so I might need to refill these a little bit. Dabbing my sponge in all my colors again. Um, again, I want to kind of keep the lighter tones into the middle. Never mind this, you know, gorgeous pink velvet here. I think it'll be pretty with all the blues on it. The, the pink will start making sense right now. It's a little, it's a little loud. Janet wants to know what shading colors you'd use on a piece with sea glass. Um, so with sea glass, I love stormy seas as a, as a dark blue. Um, sea glass has some green undertones in it. It depends on what direction you want to take it. So you could go into the mermaid tail. The mermaid tail has a lot of green in it. Um, you know, uh, for, a, for a lighter tone, you, you probably want to go into a white, like drop cloth is a nice dirty white. Um, so I'd say with sea, sea glass could be your middle color and you could use... Uh, Mermaid tail as your dark and drop cloth as your light. You know, if you want stormy seas to be your darkest color, then you're probably going into the whites. You could take it gray. I mean, people ask me that question all the time, and I think it just depends on what color you want to pull out from there. You know, you can take the blues into grays. You can take them into a purple. Um, you can take them into greens. So that makes a difference as to what colors you would combine. But I think sea glass has the most green in it, so the most light colors are going to be like your mermaid tail and um, oh, you know what else would look great with with sea glass is vintage duck egg. Vintage duck egg would, would absolutely work. So this is a nice flat surface. I'm going to get out this roller again because this would probably be an area where this roller would be nice. And you just kind of go in different directions so you get. Running out of some colors on my. Lynn says she saves me. deli containers, small jars for mixing different colors. My grandpa used to do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm messing with you. <laughs> and boxes for dry brushing. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I have a hard time. Even last night I was emptying out a container. I won't tell you what it was from, Cookie Dale. 
and um, I was debating whether I should save it for something, but I save all my Dixie Belle paint containers for blending paint when I mix a custom color and I will save it in that container and then I'll label it with what my, my custom mix is. So I save all my Dixie Belle containers. Um, I'm gonna tell you a story actually about my Dixie Belle containers. So if you guys have ever tried to wash one out, they're a pain in the butt. I usually have to take like a knife and scrape the sides of the paint off. These are plastic containers, you guys. What that says to me is that this paint has some grip. If I can't clean this container when I go to use it, I know that it's sticking to my furniture piece. So where I wanted to go with that is I have put other brands in these containers also. And I won't name which ones, but I have had other brands that I can rinse out of them with water. I'm not joking. Um, I really won't tell you which ones, but that really made a statement to me that I have to clean out my Dixie Belle paint and scrape it off the sides of a plastic container with a knife, but I can put other brands in here, shake some water around and pour it out. So, um, I mean, I, I, do with that what you will. Yeah, do with yeah. that what you will, but I'm a diehard fan and that really said something to me. You know, if you want to try it, go try it with some other brands and I think it's a good test for adhesion, but that really made a statement to me about what I'm putting on furniture pieces and knowing that it's gonna last. So I think that sea sponge roller go, makes the job go a lot quicker. This is probably the more tedious route. I don't want any of these dark spots in here. I don't wanna see, I'm gonna come work those out because like that was the stormy seas. And I don't want that. I want them to be really blended looking. You can even use your sponge in kind of a smearing motion. So you don't have that dotted effect. I want all these colors to go together. So, and then I like what I what we did on that side. My colors are all empty, so I'm gonna use I want some sea glass. You want some? Uh, you wanna pour a little bit on here for me? Just see if that okay. A little bit. So I really like how it looked with the um, little bit of sea glass in the middle to as a highlight. Um, and all I'm doing is just going a little bit heavier on the um, sea glass in this area. It still has all the other colors peeking through, but the sea glass will be my more prominent color and it makes it look like a blended highlight down the middle. Um, you guys, we're going to be giving away an 8-ounce paint, an 8-ounce Dixie Belle paint of your color choice um, at the end of this, which is coming up very soon. So um, go like my page at Brush by Brandy. And share this video. Come back and tell me what color you would choose. And I'm going to pick a winner really soon. Marcy says she loves watching you paint. Truly an inspiration to get off the couch and get busy with a project. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> that was cute, Marcy. Thank you. Thank you guys for all the positive comments and messages that you guys send me. It keeps me motivated too. Um, to let me know that this is helpful. Um, I try to come up with different ideas and push my limits, so I'm trying different things all the time. Different colors and different looks and techniques. Um, you know, I think, I, I've said this before, but I think of painting as like a cafeteria um, plan for what do you, what do you use? You know, for this one, I'm going to use blending and glaze and wax. And the next one, I'm going to use boho and, um, you know, a different glaze or a, or a transfer. It's all the same techniques. It's just how you put them together that creates all the different looks. Um, and then there, there's a million different combinations and each one would come up with a totally different look. Um, I love that Dixie Belt is such a full line. You can get all the products in one line of paint and everything's compatible. So I'm coming back with the um, stormy seas around the edges and I'm darkening that. So that's my darker color. And then I've got that highlight of sea glass in the middle. It's super faint, you guys. These are all tonal colors. So nothing really stands out or looks crazy. You could do this with, you know, purple and red if you wanted to, but these are all tone on tone colors. Um, sea glass, vintage duck egg, Dixie Belle blue, the Gulf, um, stormy seas and Savannah mist is what I'm working in here. So it's nothing crazy, but it just, um, it adds depth to your paint with the sea sponge. I've got them nice and worked in together. Let's go back to this side here so we can see how this is drying. 
I'm going to bring this in. Um, I've got minimal texture here. I'm turn still going to turn it to the side. Like that. There you go, right there. I'm still going to go over this with a um, sanding sponge. It's got a nice, nice texture. It's pretty, um, but I'm still going to get out. Like I can see, there's some little nubs here, or maybe some dust got stuck into my paint. So I'll smooth this out. Um, so there's a few areas here that are a little spongy looking, so I'm going to get rid of those. But I think it's beautiful. I can see the lighter tones peeking through here. I'm going to add the gold transfers from Redesign with Prima, um, which is these here. I'll take them out and show you guys what these look like. I'm not going to do it because my paint's not great, so I can't do it on video with you guys tonight. But you can kind of imagine how these will look. I'm going to pinstripe down the side and then maybe some adornments in the corners. Um, I could also do this with mold would be really pretty. So these are some new gold transfers that just came out. And my inspiration piece that I'm working from that my customer gave me is kind of a, reminds me of like a Cinderella ball gown. It's got these pale blues and the gold and um, it's just really romantic. So that's the look we're going for here. What grid of sanding sponge? Um, I, I use a 120. And it's so old that it's probably like a 220 now. So I keep them around for a long time. I wouldn't even consider it a sanding. I've said this before. I don't even consider it a sanding because I'm just... Do I have one out? Yeah. So this is my sanding sponge. In between every coat, I will take this and just go like this. That's it. It's not. I'm not trying to take any paint off or anything. I'm just trying to knock down any nubs in my paint. And it makes a huge, huge difference in your final finish. So, what's this one? Yeah, this is a 120, but it's it's well but it's Yeah, it's more yeah. down. So that's what I use in between each, um, each coat of paint. So, I'm going to wrap this up, you guys. So from here, I will put, I will um, give this, I will put my gold transfers on. And then I will just come back with the Dixie Belle application sponge and wipe on a clear coat. And I've got a really modeled blended look with the sea sponge so i hope that was a good technique i uh, you know if you guys try this come on and uh share them with me i love seeing the the pictures that, of what you guys create and um you guys want to give away some paint so i'm going to come over to my phone and i'm going to scroll through and pick a winner you guys Like this is real fortune. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, uh... Okay. I'm probably gonna mess this up because your name is spelled a little bit different. Our last name is <laughs> <laughs> Michelle McDaniel Rose. Michelle, if you're on, come on and say hello. I saw that your color choice would be Stormy Seas. After having used Dixieville paint for a while, Stormy Seas would definitely be one of my color choices. Um, if I had to choose, like my top five colors would be probably Stormy Seas, Drop Cloth. Um, gosh, what else do I use a lot? Gravel Road. Um, Caviar is a black. That's a great one. Um, yeah, those are <laughs> Oh, In the Navy. In the Navy, I love In the Navy. So those are my recommendations for color. So Mich Michelle McDaniel Rose, if you're on. She is, she said, that's me. <laughs> you are, you won an eight ounce of Dixie Bell paint. Congratulations. Um, Michelle, message me on my page at Brushed by Brandy and I'm gonna get your information and we'll get it out to you. Congratulations. So you guys, I'm gonna leave you tonight and we're gonna head to dinner. And um, I will post some pictures of this when I'm all done with it in the next couple of days. But I hope this has been valuable and um, I'll post this video to my YouTube channel as well so you can catch it on replay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you. You guys have a great night.